friends. Today we're going to do a video about books with a high probability of DNF. <laughs> looking at books that I have on my TBR shelf and I have a lot of books that are second books in a series and the first book either I didn't love or just didn't feel like it was worth the amount of time it took to read or there were books that I had received in some outcrate boxes that I wasn't completely sure if I was going to enjoy. Just a variety of books. Originally this was going to be done as a vlog which you know would make sense because it would be interesting to see like my actual thoughts about the books as I read them etc etc however as I started reading the first book I only made it about 8% in before I DNF and then I started the next book and made it about 10% before I DNF basically none of these made it further than about 15% like there wasn't even enough time to vlog anything and so basically this is a video of books that had a high probability of DNF that were all DNF'd. Let's just go through these books that are no longer on my TBR shelves, shall we? And the first is It Takes a Witch, which is the first book in the Wishcraft mystery series by Heather Blake. I bought this several years ago. It was prior to booktube when I purchased this. You've met me, so I just buy things that have witch in the title, basically. I thought it was interesting. I was like, that's cool. That could be a series that I could get into. I read the first chapter several years ago, like around when I first picked it up. And I didn't love it. And I was like, I'll come back to it later. This was my later. There are a few of these that I've read the first chapter of or the first book of the series or you know, what have you. So this was one of the ones where I was like, I'll come back to it later. We're at later. I read the first 100 pages of this, which is about a third of the book. It's a cozy mystery, which if that's your thing, that's fine. So if you like witches and magic and cozy mysteries, then you may like this. I thought the magic was kind of dumb. I was wanting something more magic forward than what this was. Also there's a huge like mystery of this series that I think is finally discussed like in book seven and I figured out the answer in the first 100 pages. I double checked myself. I googled it to make sure that I was right. I was like wow they're like really hardcore talking about this being like a huge secret. I bet it's XYZ and then I looked it up and I was right and they don't discuss it until like book six or seven. So I figured out like the biggest mystery of the series in the first 100 pages. So DNF that. Uh let's talk the only new release on this list. These Violent Delights by Chloe Gong. This was an outcrate book and it didn't have a whole lot of hope for it because it is a Romeo and Juliet retelling and I hate Romeo and Juliet with the passion equal to the fire of a thousand burning suns. It's not my thing but I thought like 1920s Shanghai would be really cool so while the 1920s Shanghai part of this is really cool I made it maybe 8% into this. I was not very far at all. Um, I think it was like chapter four. The thing that really just like made me be like I can't do it like I cannot do it was there's I mean it's chapter four is it a spoiler? So basically you know that like the two main characters from the rival gangs had a past relationship. They don't really discuss the, the you know logistics of it but basically they had a relationship and it's no longer valid and they're you know parts of their like almost the leader of the rival gangs. The boy, Roma, at the end of like chapter four, his father's trying to tell him to convince Juliet to help him figure out this mystery. And he's like, after all, you were lovers once, which is fine. But we learn in the first chapter that Juliet has been gone for four years. So, and she's like 17 or 18 in this book. So she's been gone for four years other than a two week time period in the middle. So either they were in love when they were 14 or they were in love when they were 16 for a two week period. And for some reason that's supposed to be the linchpin of these two working together. And I don't buy that. It's the Romeo and Juliet aspect of it. I don't understand Romeo and Juliet. I don't under understand how it's the greatest love story of all time. I just don't fucking get it. And so for that reason I DNF'd this. That being said, there are reviews out there that are talking about how amazing this book is and that the love story is not very prominent and that's fine. But I'm just, 
I'm just not here for it. Uh, next on my list of books of high probability of DNF, we have the Farseer trilogy. Technically books two and three because I already read books one. Books one. Yeah, already read books one. We all knew this was coming. Book one, there's like 40 pages where she discusses the texture and type and the writability of paper and I can't do it. So I actually really enjoy, like if these were made into a movie or a TV series, I would fucking love it. The, the actual plot, I enjoy immensely. The delivery system, not for me and that's okay. I don't like these long, drawn out, overly explained, flowery pages upon pages of description. It's not my jam. I don't like it. That's fine. It's a preference thing. I understand why people like these because the plot is awesome. But it's not for me. I'm not going to keep reading these. I read probably 10% of, I don't know which one's book three, book two, book three. Why would you put the number of the book on the book? Why would you do that? That would be stupid. Assassin's Apprentice, Royal Assassin is second. I don't know. Anyway, I read like the 10% of the first book and was like, I can't do it to myself anymore. So while I enjoy the plot, this is not happening. If they want to make a movie or a TV show, I would gladly watch that. The rest of these are kind of in the same vein of, I can't be here for this. This is going to hurt some people on my friends list and some of my friends immensely. Um, but here we go. The Obelisk Gate and the Stone Sky by N.K. Jemisin. I can't do it. Okay, here's the thing. These books are amazing. The plot, the theme, the social commentary of these books is fucking amazing. It's the delivery system that I cannot do. It is not per my reading preference, and that's okay. Again, I, not that I need to say this. If you enjoy these books, great for you. I'm happy for you. Um, Cache loves these. Becca loves these. Kate loves these. These are some of my best friends who love these books, but it's not for me, and that's okay. What I did instead was I found an Own Voices reviewer, someone who would have like a deeper, in-depth, ideal of the issues that are taken in these books and I read some synopses of basically like the whole plot outline and some theoretical um, like thought discussions and um, classroom discussions on the book and the plots as a whole so that I could have a better understanding of what the plot was, what the um, the goals were going toward what the social commentary was. Like I read, I spent hours reading through the discussions of the book rather than reading the book because that delivery system works for my brain. This delivery system does not. Um, that was my issue with the first book. I gave it like a three, maybe a 3.5 out of five stars. And that's because the plot is for me. I love what these books are trying to say and what they're trying to teach you. But I, the, the, the delivery system is really just the issue for me. So I'm going to DNF these. I'm going to get rid of the entire series. I'm going to pass them along to hopefully someone that will better enjoy them for what they are. Next we have Eldest, Risinger, and Inheritance by Christopher Paolini. I read the first book in the series a couple years ago and I enjoyed it. I think I gave it like a four or maybe even a five star. I don't know. I enjoyed it. Um, again, it's just it's boring. Like there's a lot of words here for not a whole lot that happens. And this is a series that I just can't commit my time to. I enjoy the plot, but the delivery system is not good. Now, here's the thing. The difference between these and the Broken Earth trilogy is that I don't even have any interest in looking up the rest of the series, like what it's about. I don't really care. The Broken Earth trilogy, I feel like there are things to be learned there. Like there's there's a lesson in that story. Is there a lesson in this story? Probably. I just don't even have any interest in looking up the plot of the rest of these. So while I enjoyed the first book, I just don't want to commit the time to the rest of the series. I read the first part of Eldest, I think maybe again, maybe 10%. And I just wasn't enjoying it. And I feel like if I'm not enjoying it, then I shouldn't continue on because I already had doubts about enjoying the series as a whole. 
And the last book that we're going to talk about is uh, The Glittering Court by Rochelle Mead. Here's my thing. I read the first chapter of this for a try chapter tag uh, either last year or the year before. It was probably the year before. But anyway, I read a chapter for a try chapter tag and was like, I can't fucking do this right now. Like it's just another YA story where like the girl's running from her family and needs to escape and like she's in an arranged marriage, yada, 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 whatever. And I was like, I can't do it. So I was knew that this book was going to have a high probability of DNF, which is why it's on this list. I picked it up. I read more this time. I read, I think, maybe a quarter of this one. I did read more of it than some of the others because I love Rochelle Mead. I love Vampire Academy. I love Bloodlines. I even love Soundless. Like Soundless is great too. So I was really hoping that I would enjoy this and it just didn't work for me. And here's why. So this girl leaves because she is being pawned off in this arranged marriage to uh, like a distant cousin who's kind of an idiot and she doesn't want to like have to deal with him and his grandmother which first off his grandmother's old she gonna die soon anyway so don't even worry about her second off you leave this by going into a situation where you're going to be pawned off to in an arranged marriage to someone you have no idea who you're getting attached to like at least in this situation you know who you're being attached to you could be getting attached to a serial killer for all you know in the situation that you're putting yourself into why like why did you not use that situation to just run rather than being, you know, in the situation? Like she allows one of her hand, the handmaid that she's taking the, the position of to go into the glittering court. She gives her um, the money and the availability to run off like to another, like far, far away and go to her family's estate and like continue out her life there. Like, bitch, just go with her. Like, like, look, I don't want to live this life. Can I just run away with you? And like, I'll help you on the farm. Like, no, because she wants to be taken care of and pretty and in dresses and gowns and have all the jewelry and all the pretty things and blah, 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 blah. So I just, it's just not for me. I know that the series follows three women. I know that each book is the same time period, but focusing more on the different women per each book. And that's another thing I just don't really care about. So DNF. So here they are in all their glory. Books coming off of my TBR that I will not be reading because I have DNF'd them all this month. You just sell a whole bunch of books that I have DNF'd and I'm very proud of this. I do typically have the rule that I don't unhaul a book unless I have at least tried it because at one point or another I was interested in it or I wouldn't have hauled it. So I feel like this is a good way to do that. So next time I have a group of books that I, you know, I'm not sure about, I'll do this again and hopefully that time I may actually read more than 10% of one or two of them and can actually do a vlog instead of just sitting here and talking to you but I think we've all learned that I suck at vlogging. That is all I have for today. I post reading, writing, book, and planner related videos a few times a week. If you don't want to miss anything I have going in the future make sure you hit the subscribe button and the notification bell down below and until then I will see you guys next time. Bye! <laughs>